So you're right, this is our oil-free centrifugal compressor. Um, mm -hmm. Unlike other oil-free centrifugal on the market, this one does not have a magnetic bearing. We use our own patented aero lift bearing technology. And the way that, okay. that works, if you would like me to explain. Yeah, is, for sure. Um, it's all a mechanical process. So rather than you know the mm -hmm. controls and everything with the magnets holding it in place, mm -hmm. levitating that rotor, uh, we have just a layer of refrigerant vapor that as the rotor starts spinning up, getting up to speed, mm -hmm. uh, just lifts off that bearing and levitates with that frictionless barrier around it. So From the refrigerant itself? Correct. So the refrigerant itself, and what is the refrigerant? Uh, just the refrigerant in the system. Do you so know what, the vapor. what refrigerant it is? So we are qualified with 513A, 515B, 1234ZE. Okay. For so low GWP options. Refrigerant. So yep. someone would buy this, put it in their centrifugal compressor, put some shells on it and things like that. Yeah, so this would be going into uh, like air-cooled chillers for mm -hmm. data centers or comfort cooling applications. Uh, we were targeting that high lift application and obviously are then qualified for the low lift like water to water cooling as mm -hmm. well. So Gotcha. So this is a very weird looking <laughs> arrangement. And when I first saw the video in the cutaway, it's a little easier to understand, but could you explain how the refrigerant's flowing through this thing? Sure, so you've got your suction on one end, down on this side, and okay. then it's got two impeller stages. And so- and So one impeller here, mm -hmm. one impeller here. Correct. Okay. So comes in the stage one side, goes through the impeller, which then you know, adds a lot of kinetic energy, speeds up the refrigerant, and then it goes through a volute where it actually slows down and that convert or that converts the energy from kinetic to potential in the right. form of pressure. And so it gets all gathered up in the volute and then out the stage one side okay. through our discharge or through our interstage tube. Interstage tube, that makes mm -hmm. sense. And then to stage two where the same process happens again, you get another step of uh, compression before it goes out the discharge here on the side. I see. Okay, so two stages. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. You get in higher lift applications like air cold, right? Correct. So yep. was this designed specifically to address the need for cooling in data centers, or was it just designed for a general use? Or so it can fit in a lot of applications, but we are optimized for data center right. use. Because so the data trying... centers are exploding. It's mm -hmm. insane. Right? Exactly. And you, you either do water cooled, which uses a lot of water from the evaporation of the towers, mm -hmm. or you do air cooled, the two primary options. So Exactly. So we we're targeting that air cooled uh, mm -hmm. because of the water scarcity issue, like you said. And also with data center, we think the aero lift bearing is an important piece of the puzzle because it really increases the reliability. Um, because it's all just a mechanical process, mm -hmm. it's very robust design. Uh, the same thing happens every time you start up and shut down. When mm -hmm. it shuts down, uh, the rotor just you know, slows the rotation until it just drops and rests back on that bearing. Like and a so, cast down kind of mode. Yep, just kind of yeah. sits back down on it. Got and it. the process from a controlled shutdown is very similar to if we just cut the power. So okay. for data center applications, what that means is that if there's a, you know, a quick power interruption, data center, any downtime is really bad. So you want to yeah. minimize that. <laughs> and uh, instead of having like redundant pieces like touchdown bearings or uh, needing time to get all the electronics back up right. and running, we're just ready to start right away. So the restart time is real short mm -hmm. compared yep. to different types of technology. And is this a variable speed product typically? Yes, so our okay. full package that we'll be offering is the compressor, the variable speed drive that we've paired with it, and then the controllers. Which is an external there. piece? Correct. The VF, VFD? Yep, okay. so we've decoupled the design. So the compressor stands alone, the drive, you can put it wherever you want on your chiller, mm -hmm. and you know you have a little bit more flexibility there to, based on the application. If you don't need the full power of our biggest drive, then there are other drive options as well. Right. Um, so it gives you a little bit more options there. And then the controller is kind of the brains of the compressor. We know the operating limits at any condition, and so it'll talk to a system PLC that'll set the demand, tell us if we need to speed up or slow down to meet capacity, mm -hmm. and then we'll make sure that the compressor's staying safe and staying within its operating range. Very nice. And this, we didn't say this before, but this is the, where the motor lives, right? Correct. Got it. Okay, excellent. Well, yeah. thank you very much, Graham, and enjoy the rest of your show. Yeah, thank thank you. you for your time, appreciate it.